everyone, Ken here with Ken's Creations and welcome to Ken's Creations Roadmap to Cricut Design Space. In this series of videos, we're gonna take a personal look at Cricut Design Space and all the different pieces that go into it that you can use to make the perfect project. So let's take a look at what today's installment is all about. In this installment, we're gonna take a look on the basic upload in Cricut Design Space. Now, a basic upload are going to be your files that have the extension JPEG, GIF, PNG, and BMP. Now, before I show you the process of uploading these images, let's take a look at the difference between a JPEG and a PNG file. These are going to be the two most common files that you run into in Cricut Design Space. And it's probably the number one question I get about which one is better to go with and which one looks better in Design Space. Now, as you can see, a JPEG file has a white background. So when you upload this into Cricut Design Space, Design Space will automatically put a cut line around this box. So a lot of people will say, my image has a box instead of a cut line around the actual image. And that's because it's a JPEG file and it has a background. Now a PNG file does not have that background. So when you upload this into Design Space, it's automatically going to put your cut lines around the actual image. So there's no need to clean up the background because the PNG file doesn't have a background and Design Space is intuitive enough to put your cut line around your actual image. So in my opinion, that's why PNG files are always a better option because it requires less work on my part to clean up that image. However, you can accomplish the same thing on a JPEG file using tools in Cricut Design Space. So let's show you that process now. So let's take a look on how to do an upload in Cricut Design Space. The first thing you're going to do is go over to the left hand side of the screen and select the Upload Image tab. Now we're going to take a look at the basic upload today. So these are going to be your JPEG, GIF, PNG, or BMP files. And these images will be single layer. Unlike an SVG that have multiple layers, this will just have one layer. So this will also be the option where you'd probably want to do your print then cuts. I'm going to go ahead and select upload image and for our first demonstration let's take a look at the PNG file because I consider these to be the easiest files to upload. Now we have to tell Cricut Design Space where is this file. I save all my files on the desktop because it makes it super easy. So I'm going to hit browse and we're going to take a look at this two bears on a bike and as you can see it is a .png file. This is going to bring up a little snapshot of your photo to make sure you selected the right one, of course. And then we need to tell Cricut Design Space, what type of image is this? Is it a simple, a moderate, or complex image? And the difference is your simple images are few colors, they're high contrast, there's a transparent or a white simple background. Your moderate images have simple details and more colors, good contrast between the actual image and its background, and your complex are fine details, they have blended colors, lots of colors, and there is a low contrast between the background and your image. Now I always select the complex image because most of the images I'm working with seem to have a lot of colors. So once I've selected that I can hit continue and as you can see because this is a big file it is a pretty huge picture. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and use my tools up here which is zoom out and zoom in. So I'm going to zoom out here and there is my entire file. Now because this was a PNG file, there is no background. So it really eliminates any cleanup and using any of these other tools. Now as you can see, if I hit preview, this is going to show me where the actual cut lines on my image will be. So this is where my Cricut machine will actually cut this image. So as you can see, it eliminated everything in between. I don't have to do anything. The only thing I have to usually do on a PNG file is hit continue. Now this last screen is very important and a lot of people miss some details here. The first thing is, is you're going to want to name your image. Now this is required, you have to do this, so I'm just going to call this bears. And then there is tags. Tags are so important. Even though this says it's recommended, I would highly encourage you to always give a tag to your photos. And the reason why is because when you're searching for an image, it's going to use these tags. So if I put bear, every time I search for bear, this one will always come up in my searches. I could put bike, 
I could put summer. I can put the type of file it was or who created it. So this is a PPBN file. Now, once I have all of my tags, I have one other option down here. And as you can see, it automatically clicks preserve original image within shape recommended for print then cut projects. So if I select this box, it will keep all of the colors in the shape. It will keep it exactly as you see it on my screen. However, when you bring it into Cricut Design Space, it will also bring it in as a print then cut file. If I do not select this, this will actually just create a cut file and it will save it as a black file, but it will not save it as a print then cut. So that's a big difference and I get this question a lot of times. People will come and not pay attention to this down here and their file will be black and they say, well, why is my file black? And it's because they didn't check this or vice versa. They want their image to just be the outline to cut and it's a print then cut file. And it's because this is selected. So once you've decided if you want it to be a print then cut, you're going to go ahead and hit save. Now this is going to take you back to that original screen where we started the upload process and you're going to see your file under the uploaded images here. Now you can select your files and bring it in. Now I'm going to bring both of these files in so I can show you the difference in that check mark that I was showing you. As you can see, when I bring these images into Cricut Design Space, one has color to it and it is considered, as you can see, a print then cut. Now that was with that check mark in that box. This one, is just a black image and it is designated as a cut file and that is because I did not select that box. So that's the big difference by selecting that box and unselecting that box is it will automatically tell Cricut Design Space, hey this is a print then cut image and this is a cut image. So let's take a look at a JPEG upload and how it differs from a PNG upload. So let's go ahead and hit upload images and just be like before, we're going to go to basic upload because this is a JPEG file. We're going to hit upload image. We're going to browse for our image. And this time we're going to select the two bears on a bike with the JPEG format. This is still going to bring up a sample of our picture here. And we also want to say it's a complex image. Just like before, it's going to bring the bears into session. So we want to zoom out. And as you can see, there is this white background. So now if we were to look at the cut lines, as you can see, it's going to cut around the background and not the bears on the bike, which is what we want. So we need to use some cleanup to get the cut lines around the bear and the bike. So we're going to be using these tools here, which is our zoom out and zoom in buttons. We also have a undo and redo option. We have a crop. A select erase, erase only, and then we have some advanced options. So let's go ahead and take a look at those and see which each one does. So let's go and take a look at the crop option first. Now the crop option will trim away any unwanted portions of the uploaded image. So if we wanted to just concentrate on the flower, we could just crop right there and it would bring up the flower and nothing else. Then we could work just with that flower. Now, if we don't want that and we made a mistake, we can just hit the undo button and it takes us back to our original image. Now we can zoom back out and now let's take a look at the magic wand. So now let's take a look at the select and erase option, which I call the magic wand. Now, essentially what the magic wand will do is it's going to erase the part you select of color. So if I wanted to erase this white background by hitting that, it will automatically get rid of that white background because it's selecting that area and erasing it. Now there is some advanced options here and they are a little bit confusing, but basically essentially what they are is the reduced images is how many shades of that color are selected and deleted. And then you have the color tolerance, which is how many similar shades would be deleted. Now Cricut automatically defaults to an unmodified and 16, which for most images works perfect. However, in my experience, when I brought in a JPEG that seems to have a jagged edge, so my line is not perfectly smooth, by increasing my color tolerance up, the smoother the line gets. So if you're working with an image and the lines are just not perfect in what you would like to see, try playing with the color tolerance and that will smooth out your lines. 
Now let's go ahead and take a look on what we need to do to get our cut lines perfect on the magic wand. So basically we need to select all of these white areas and eliminate them. This is getting rid of our background so that way when we cut this image it will just cut around the bears and the bike. Now on some of these tight spaces if you can't get in there go ahead and use your zoom in key and scroll down and this will give you a little bit of a better control to get into those tight spaces. I'm going to go ahead and clean up all of the white spots so that way we can show you what the cut image will look like. Once you've gotten all of the white off of your background, now you can take a peek at what your cut lines will look like. As you can see, by eliminating the white using the magic wand, our cut lines are exactly where they were when we had the PNG file. Now, let's say you accidentally made a mistake and cleared an area you did not want to clear. That's okay. Go ahead and hit the undo button to fix that. The eraser option is pretty self-explanatory. You'll just drag the eraser over the unwanted portions of the image. You do have an option on how big you would like your eraser. You have the option to go very large with it, as you can see, or you have the option to change your eraser to very small eraser. And as you can see on this one, very small. As you can see, it's pretty easy. Whatever you click will eliminate that portion. Now, if we look at our cut lines, you're going to see the cut lines were created on the parts I erased. Once you've used all of your tools to get your cut lines exactly where you want to on your image, you can go ahead and save this JPEG file. Go ahead and click the continue button. And once again, don't forget to give your image a name and use TagWorks for easy lookup later. Don't forget your preserve original image within shape option. Now, if you have that clicked, once again, that's going to bring in the print and cut file. And if you have it unclicked, it's going to just bring in a cut file. Once you hit save, it's going to take you back to the original upload screen. This is where you're going to see your image under the uploaded image section of the screen. Now, as you can see, we have the JPEG file here and the PNG file here. Now these look exactly the same, hence why I think PNG files are much easier to bring in. You don't have to worry about the cleanup. You don't have to worry about getting your cut lines. It just makes the process easier. Now I have two of these images in my uploaded image library. So how do I get rid of the one I don't want? By simply clicking the I and the delete option, this will delete this image from my uploaded library. It will say, are you sure you want to delete this image, which I am, by hitting yes, it will actually delete that image out of the uploaded file. So that way, it's not just sitting in my insert image area where I don't need it. Well, I hope you learned something new in that installment of Ken's Creations Roadmap to Cricut Design Space. If you haven't seen all the videos in this series, make sure to click the playlist on your screen now. You'll be taken to the playlist with the collection of the entire Roadmap to Cricut Design Space videos. Also, if you haven't checked out my print to cut videos, make sure to click this playlist now. This will give you an inside look of how to calibrate your machine, update your firmware, and get your machine ready for print to cut. All right, thanks for watching today's video. Hope you guys have an amazing day. Thanks.